just real close. So, so all right, let's go. All right. We got Ron Shegog here. Welcome home. All right. Thank you, Myra. <laughs> it's good to be back. Hold on one second. Hey, y'all, can y'all just bring it down just a little bit? Tell them to bring it down. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, you, uh, we're here in this beautiful South Panola High School football indoor facility. Uh, you've never been here before today, right? No, first no? time being inside of it. Yeah, and uh, you uh, were said to be one of the first black African Americans from Panola County to play in the NFL. Uh, were you drafted? No, I was not drafted. I was actually a free agent. Okay. And when I heard those facts, I was surprised because I thought there was somebody else before me. I guess somebody did the research and said, no, you're the first. So, yeah, I was surprised by that information. Okay, great. What years uh, were you there? At, uh, At the, in the NFL? NFL, 86, 87. Okay, who did you play with? Played with Stanley Morgan, Steve Groven, what Urban team? Fryer, New England. New England, yeah. okay. Stayed in New England, first year went, was amongst the last three players to get cut. Went back the second year, made the team, got credit for playing in three games. Um, and after that, sit out for about six months and then went to Tampa. Worked out in Tampa all summer, didn't make the team there. Mm -hmm. So after that, I went to Winnipeg, Canada. You played in the CFL? Okay, okay. How long did you play there? A year. A year, okay. All right, uh, go back a little bit to high school. You played at South Panola? Uh, 80 to 82. Okay. 80 was my sophomore year, and 82 was my senior year. Okay, and uh, what position did you play? Here in high school, I played receiver and defensive back. Okay. You know, back then in high school, you had such a small number, so players had to sometimes play both ways. Mm -hmm. And I found myself a lot of time playing both ways. Okay. Uh, who were your coaches doing that? Time? When I came in, I had Coach Arnold and Coach McMahon. Coach Darrell Arnold. Yeah. Coach Arnold McMahon. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Hopper. Everybody knows Coach, Coach Hopper. Hopper. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, You know, uh, I know it. you probably look at NFL on TV today, so what was your experience in the NFL like? Uh, was it as surreal as it looks sometimes? Well, uh, at the time, my, well, let me back up. I don't watch a lot of football on TV, especially at the professional level because most players you talk to, and I'm probably the same way, once a player, hardly ever a fan, fan. I like college football a lot more because those guys are out there, they're competing. Mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're trying to get to the next level. And as far as the experience, it's, a, it's something that's unreal. Um, you know, it's like your first game, you're so overwhelmed and you're so excited and you're trying to calm yourself down, you know, your hands are sweating and when you walk out and you're in front of 60, 70,000 people and it's just so noisy once the game gets going and you can barely hear yourself think. Mm -hmm. and, but, you know, after the game actually gets going, you know, you, you get into it and, you know, you like, you don't even know the fans are there when you're zoned in to the game. Oh, okay. A lot of that, people ask, did you see or did you hear? No, I didn't hear that because you're zoned into the game. All right, okay. <laughs> so after Sapanola, you went to school? I went two years at Northwest. Okay. Uh, tenure at Northwest. First year there, we won the Junior College National Championship. Mm -hmm. So after two years of Northwest, I left there and I finished up at Austin Peay, which is in Clarksville, Tennessee. Okay. All right. Um, 
Now, I know we, we're going back a long time, but during your years at Sapanola, like, what were your goals and dreams? Did they, were the goals sports-wise or not? Not really, uh, Myra. I never could imagine actually going to college, playing football. You know, I was just kind of focused on just getting an education here in high school, getting out of here, and probably finding a job. Okay. But one thing that drove that, when you talk about going to college, is that no matter what I've always done in life, I've always wanted to try to be the best at it. Like my mom, she, she she has a lot of uh, newspaper clippings. You know this this stuff I never knew, and I go back and I read those clippings and, and the articles. And I'm like, wow, who is this guy? <laughs> but I, uh, you know, I never, I didn't think it was possible because uh, you remember back in the '80s, football at the professional level, we only saw it on TV. Mm -hmm. I always imagine that as something being far off. But uh, I guess the way that I got there was one day at a time being the best person I could be, no matter what it was, whether I was here at South Panola, whether I was in junior college, or whether I was at four year also. I always tried to be the best athlete, the best student, the best whatever. Okay. Um Remind us of uh, some of your closest Sapanola teammates uh, back then. Well, you probably know yeah, one I of them. I know, yeah. Well. <laughs> well, we call him Doc, but uh -huh. his name is Tommy Brown. Yeah. You know, he and I was probably thick as thieves. And, you know, there was Robert Gross. Uh, here, in, when it came to the uh, athletics, you know, we had uh, Todd Self, we had Snell Grove, Al Snell Grove just a host of guys, but you know, Doc would probably be the closest friend and Rodney Baker, you know, those guys. All right. Um, tell us, uh, you, you have a funny memory you can share with us about it. <laughs> here at South Yeah. Coast. Well, yeah, okay. here at uh, this didn't. Uh, this building didn't exist. But right. in the in the foot, you know, in the football world. Okay. Yeah. What, what is one? I'll give you thing? one uh, here at South Panola. Okay. Uh, you know, games are Friday. Uh -huh. Pep rallies are Friday. And uh, you know, after class, we would come down to the field house because the game usually starts at seven seven thirty. And while we were in the field house. <laughs> The coaches would always come through ranting and raving about, get your mind right, get your mind right, get your mind on the game, guys. I always, and you know, later on is when I thought about it, and I always thought that was funny. What was, what was he talking about, get your mind right? Uh, because the thing about me, I've always been this way even since high school. If you're an athlete, and no matter what sport you're participating in, if you haven't played the game through your mind the night before, or days before, you're not ready for the game. So when coach was walking through Holland, get your mind right, you know, my mind has been right since the last game in it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm getting mentally ready for the next game. And mm -hmm. that's kind of always how I prepare myself for anything because, you know, through this thing called life process, it's one thing I've, I've come to realize. Success is where opportunity meets preparation. Okay. And I've kind of always prided myself. All right. Uh, I, this, this is not really one of the, well, it, it is. Tell us about your family, you know, uh, when you were here, a lot of people at the time we were here, they weren't born, so they don't really know your story. Who are your parents, your sisters, brothers, that, that kind of a thing? Catch us up. Well, for those who don't know, uh, my, my mom is Margaret uh, Cosby, and then my dad is James Cosby, and all of my siblings are uh, former South Carolina graduates. Uh, you know, I'm going to call them by their given name. I mean, 
most people may know him by something else, but there's Tommy, which is my older brother, uh, Inez, which is my older sister, and then there's me, and after me, there's Jeffrey, and then there's Yolanda, which is my younger sister, and then Patrick, my baby brother. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So all right. they all still live here yeah. in this area, except for, for Jeff, who lives in town. Oh, okay. Uh, married children? I am married. I've okay. been married for 22 years. I have three kids, age range from 19 to 38. Okay. Uh, my 19 year old is, is still living with me. He's getting ready to go to college. Okay. Uh, my wife, Lynn, I've been with her 22 years. And I, you know, I appreciate her putting up with me because <laughs> I know sometimes I can be a headache. Uh, we live there in Memphis. Actually, I've been in Memphis about 35 years. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for catching us up on every, everybody. Uh, do you have any members of Danny Ray Cole? He was a teammate at the time with you. You remember yeah. Danny Ray? Danny Ray Cole. You know, I don't know where he got this nickname, but everybody used to call him Murder. Uh, you know, he was one of those guys probably early on one of the hardest working individuals that I had encountered. Mm -hmm. uh, every day, Danny Ray spent most of his time that I seen, saw him and we were in the field house or wherever we was on the field, he spent all his time getting better, trying to get better. You know, he would catch us sometimes just doing nothing and ask us, hey, come on, let's go to the weight room. He spent a lot of time getting better. Every day he worked on something to get better. And that's one thing I have always admired about him as an individual and as an athlete. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, you said you live in Memphis. Where do you Where do you work? We were kind of talking about this. I work for a company Memphis. called Cargill. Mm -hmm. uh, been there for 10 years. Uh, prior to that, I worked for a chemical company for 26 years. Okay. Right. But going back, Cargill was an agricultural business. Uh, I'm actually operation manager uh, of Cotton Division. Okay. And you know, it's uh, I enjoy what I what I'm doing. I uh, I love uh, the people. I love the atmosphere uh, because when uh, I was talking to a young lady earlier and we were discussing Cargill, and she said, I think I know. That place, but, you know, Cargill is the number one privately owned company in the United States. Okay. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of opportunity to go places, meet a lot of people. And that's one thing I love about South Panola, because when people ask, where did you go to high school? And you say, South Panola, it's a bull. That's the <laughs> So, man, y'all are tough, aren't you? So I want to give a congrats and hats off to all the guys that came after me and kept up the tradition here and kept the line going. We, we believe it was players like you that kind of really laid the ground groundwork uh, throughout the years uh, of hard work and dedication to this program because uh, we were talking, to, I was talking to Pete Robertson, and, you know, he was talking about when his, I think his first or second year after desegregation, they went, they were like the first team that went 10 and 0 mm -hmm. here, and I remember in 77 uh, with uh, Donnell Townsend, and they went, you know, 11 and 0, and uh, then I think our senior year, maybe I went 8 and 2 or something. You probably don't. It's been a long time ago, so yeah. I had to when I was, uh, uh, the sports editor, I had to do a lot of research, so sometimes that's why I can still remember some of those numbers. But uh, you had said something earlier. I don't know if that would be your advice to young players uh, who are coming up, dreams of you know of the next level. What would be your advice to them? Uh, you said it was your it was success plus something. I, you know. My definition yeah. of success is where opportunity meets preparation. Okay. You may not, well, you're not going to be good at everything in life. But whatever you choose to do, put your time, your energy into that. And, you know, it's like 
if you and I was outside and we were just kicking rocks, I'm going to be the best rock kicker and the longest rock kicker that day. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say to a, a young person coming up, you know, I'm one that truly believes that everybody is born with a talent. And your talent may not be sports, it may not be football. Actually, when I look back over my life, I wish we'd had golf here at South Bernola when I came up, now that I've gotten into the game. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I would say to them, you know, no matter what you decide to do, be the best at it. Do your research. Do your studies on it. Become an understudy of, of that and be a master of your craft. All right. Anything else you want to add? I did not ask that. No, no. no? I, mean, I appreciate you guys taking the time out to give me and the rest of the guys the opportunity. And hopefully, you know, this will inspire somebody to want, maybe not to be a professional athlete, or to be a journalist. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Myra. <laughs> All right.